not including the last story level. Shadow the Hedgehog contains a total of 22 levels. Now, there are 22 levels, but a single playthrough will only have you travel through six stages, depending on your allegiance. Your journey will always begin in Westopolis, where you can either just head to the goal ring and continue being neutral, help Sonic take out all the aliens in the area to be good, or take out all the gun troops in the area to be evil. If you want to reach a particular stage, you need to complete the correct mission in the previous stage in order to reach it. So if you want to go higher up on the grid, you need to complete the correct dark mission. And if you want to go lower on the grid, then, you know, you got to complete a hero mission. The actual mission varies from stage to stage, but most of the time, unless you're going neutral, your allegiance will require you to find or destroy a certain amount of objects. Remember the Chaotix missions in Sonic Heroes? It's kind of like that, only it could be much, much worse. Considering that enemies and objects you need to find, attack or destroy or whatever, have arrows that point to them when you're near them, I would have to disagree. When you complete six stages, you'll get one of ten endings, depending on your pathway and depending on what mission you completed in the last stage, which can be the difference between Shadow saving the world from Black Doom or switching to Black Doom's side at the very last possible second just to be a dick to Sonic. Okay, so you got one ending. How do you get the other one you missed out on? Well, it's simple. Instead of just picking the stage on the stage select screen and complete the other mission for the other ending, you have to start over from Westopolis, complete six stages again just to get to the stage you got to the last time, and pick the other mission to get the other ending. Or you could try one of the different routes, or maybe come back to that one later. Considering there are 326 routes, there's tons of other options. Also, pay attention to what he said. He basically said that he's confused why you can't make story process outside of story mode. And people call this guy intelligent and well informed? Are you kidding me? So, in order to complete Shadow the Hedgehog, you need to tackle a total of 60 missions. Six for each ending. How do you get to the 10 endings is all up to you. But regardless of such, this means you have to play Westopolis 10 fucking times because like i said you have to begin your journey anew when you want to go for the other ending oh my god what kind of bullshit stupid asinine redundant method of padding the game out is that i thought it was bad with sonic heroes but that doesn't even compare to this oh. so according to johnny playing 14 levels four times with only mild differences is far better than playing one stage with three possible outcomes 10 times you've got to be kidding me Oh, why does this game have a last story segment? Can I just be fine with completing the game once and be happy with the ending I get? No, I can't because not only does my pathway story suck ass, I know that my story isn't legit because of this fucking thing. Sure, your ending might not be canon, but the middle could easily be. Just as any other ending could have a bit of what could be canon. The whole point of the middle is that that's what the player gets to decide what happened. There's so many routes it can go on, and the player can decide what happened. Sure, the beginning and ending are the ones that are canon, but the middle is all up for the player to decide. That's the appeal of this. How did you miss that? Now, if you're absolutely fine with just completing six stages and getting a completely half-ass ending, then I seriously hope you didn't pay full price for this game. You are ripping yourself off by the fuckload. But even then, completing the game itself is just an enormous chore. You just can't win. Sure, it's annoying if you're trying to go through it in one big go, but if you're just trying to go through it just as you go along and just kind of casually, it's not too bad. You have a ton of routes to go on, it goes through so many different things, and you can just kind of screw around and do what you want. Yeah, there's a few levels that suck that you can skip, but the appeal of this game is that it gives so many options for the player. Some that maybe you don't like, and that's fair, but what about people who do like this stuff? What, do they not get anything? You were complaining about the story, but what about the gameplay? Should people who like this style just not get anything? Because you don't like it? Because it's not like your precious Sonic 3? My favorite pathway is the neutral pathway. I wanna know why, because all I have to do is get to the goal ring and BAM, onto the next stage. Point A to point B. That's the way I like it in a Sonic game. Only problem is that the story is absolute horseshit. Seriously, Shadow Android? And I have to play it twice to technically get both endings at the end of the pathway. But you know, that's not the whole package. Gotta play those Dark and Hero missions, and ugh, most of the time, they're a pain. Now, there are those rare moments where the Dark and Hero mission is just getting to the goal ring, but why can't they all be like this? I find it amusing how a guy who's such a big fan of the Metroid series hates the fact that this, that this game occasionally has some paths and missions that aren't based on getting to the goal ring. It's also amusing considering how he bitched about Sonic Adventure 2 being linear because I guess either he's misleading us, or he can't make up his fucking mind of what he wants. 
but in all honesty, plenty of the missions are fine if you like that style, but this is the main problem with Johnny's review. He doesn't bother to give any idea of who might like this. He never says, oh, but if you like a non-linear style, you might enjoy some of these. I just happen to not like him. No, as far as he's concerned, you need to think like him. In fact, why couldn't Shadow the Hedgehog let us travel through all these levels in one single playthrough? Screw the morality, screw the multiple endings, just make it one giant adventure with a cohesive story and I'm all good. See what I mean when I said back in part 1 that he does not give this game any fair chance to stand on its own? All he does is compares it to what he wants out of a Sonic game. He doesn't offer any sort of idea of who might like this, or how it does the actual concept. All he says is, I want a point A to point B experience and I didn't get it so this game sucks. Most of the time, the hero and dark missions require you to find and destroy a certain amount of objects. There's so much of this sprinkled throughout your 10 playthroughs of this game, and it sucks the life out of me. Westopolis, for example, requires you to locate and knock out every gun soldier in the area if you want to continue towards the dark side, but the hero side requires you to kill every alien on the stage. And if it isn't aliens to hunt down or gun troops to shoot, it's shit like collecting top secret discs or bombs to activate. I hate shit like this. You know what really would have made this less painful? A radar. Or at the very least, a map. Instead, we have to manually search for everything in these stages, and when the level design is particularly confusing or just absolute shit, it can take forever. You forgot to mention the little arrows that pop up on the enemies and objects when you get near them. Yeah, it doesn't help that much, but it's something. Something that you fail to mention. Also, yeah, I do agree that, yeah, some of the missions can be difficult for this, but you've also failed to mention that some of the missions have the items pretty much right along your path and can be easily be completed. And what do you do? You just show the absolute worst one in the game to trick your audience to think the whole game is like that. Take stages like Lost Impact, where you have to destroy every artificial chaos in the stage to complete the hero mission. Every. Single. One. But what really makes it bad is the level itself. It's so confusing, it's so slow, and it's so... boring. But you know what? You technically don't even have to touch Lost Impact to get to the true hero pathway. No. You just gotta play the other levels you already played like six fucking times to ignore it! This game structure is bullshit. If it's not completing missions that are just so goddamn dull, it's dealing with the monotony of replaying the same stages over and over again and fighting the same bosses repeatedly just to avoid the stages you don't want to play to get every ending to reach the last story segment. Or you could try different routes, or you could try a different mission in that stage. Also, I find it amusing how you're complaining about running around looking for enemies when you've claimed that you love exploring in games and love non-linear platformers. I don't feel like killing all the aliens in Westopolis, but I want to get to the true hero path sooner or later, so, you know, I'll just complete the neutral mission in Westopolis and do the hero mission in the next stage, Glyphic Canyon, to get myself on the right track. Okay, I got the gold ring in Westopolis, and here I am in Glyphic Canyon, so let's do the hero mission and- Oh, I have to kill a large amount of aliens anyway?! Even then, more than when I had to kill in Westopolis?! <laughs> God. Well, are they more spread out than they are in Westopolis, or did you just see a big number and go into panic mode? Also, considering how straightforward this stage is, I can't see how it would be that hard. Most of them are on your path. Even then, if you do happen to miss one, you can just go back to one of the save points and go back to another spot earlier and find them. It's not even that hard, because it's pretty clear where the, plat where the path splits. It also doesn't help that the overall level design and aesthetics are just incredibly uninspired. A lot of levels in this game just look bleak, complete with uninteresting textures with zero appeal whatsoever. Really, it fits in with the tone the game's trying to go with, with the whole battle with the people and the aliens, it makes everything look lived in, gritty, and kinda destroyed. And what, you assume that no one's gonna like this style? Sure, it might not have as big of an audience, or it might not be appealing to you, but there's people who will like this. I know plenty of people who like this. There are times where I could maybe, maybe squint my eyes and convince myself that I'm playing something related to Sonic the Hedgehog, but the game likes to constantly remind me that it's hardcore and bright colors are for pussies. Look at all this fucking purple and gray. This is a man's game about a superpowered three-foot hedgehog. Look at Shadow go. Yeah, ride that slow-moving block. Look at all these pretty streaks of light in a sequence that only requires me to tilt the analog stick at certain points. Watch as Shadow travel at a high speed with no input required from the player, and observe as Shadow falls slowly toward the ground all the damn time. Behold as the terrible controls require me to slowly inch my way through each level to avoid running into shit or running off a cliff. Witness how some missions require you to attack members of your own allegiance, complete with your ally scolding you for doing so. For fuck's sake, this game is horrible! Oh, wonderful insight, Johnny. Now here's a little clip to show you why that statement was as pointless as it was. 
but the game likes to constantly remind me that it's hardcore and bright colors are for pussies. Look at all this fucking purple and gray. This is a man's game about a superpowered three foot hedgehog. Look at Shadow go. Yeah, ride that slow moving block. Look at all these pretty streaks of light in a sequence that only requires me to tilt the analog stick at certain points. Watch as Shadow travel at a high speed with no input required from the player, and observe as Shadow falls slowly toward the ground all the damn time. Behold as the terrible controls require me to slowly inch my way through each level to avoid running into shit or running off a cliff. Witness how some missions require you to attack members of your own allegiance, complete with your ally scolding you for doing so. How does shooting yourself in the foot feel like, Johnny? Or did your fans convince you that you didn't shoot yourself in the foot? This blue sky, staring at it from afar. Have I seen it before? I can't even enjoy the music. It's so damn forgettable with three exceptions. The opening theme which plays during the intro, which is at best, all right, and the true ending music, Never Turn Back by Crush 40, is the best piece of music in this game, bar none. The only other song I remember is Westopolis, but only because I had to play the stage 10 fucking times in order to get every ending. No credit to the remix of the Eggman theme from Adventure 2? Nothing for All Hell Shadow? Or Chosen One? Also, even though you don't like the music, is it at least tasteful? Does it work with the levels? Does it fit it well with the level themes? What does it do? Or is it just because you don't like this style that you've assumed that it's bad? Also, maybe you could play a few extra clips. You can't really just say something like that about music and just expect your audience to go with it without at least playing a few samples. The music just isn't catchy, or in my opinion, not well constructed. It just all blends in, and if you were to ask me to identify a song from a particular stage, I honestly wouldn't be able to do it. The graphics themselves aren't really that impressive either. The character models of Shadow and Company are ripped right out of Sonic Heroes, and human characters like the President, the Gun Commander, and this Elbridge Abomination just look terrible. The human animations are severely stiff and very awkward, and overall, it's just not a pretty game to look at. I blame games like Metroid Prime and Resident Evil 4 for spoiling me, I guess. Yeah, that's probably not a fair comparison, but I'm just saying that Shadow the Hedgehog, as a game released late in the 6th generation, looks barely above a Dreamcast title. Sure, the graphics are nothing special, but they do fit with the level themes, and they help set the game's tone and atmosphere. Sure, they're not anything special, but they do get the job done. I understand if you don't like this look, but just saying that it looks bad is pretty unfair when that's the intentional look that the game's going for. What, does Fallout suck because it doesn't look bright and colorful? It took a lot out of me to record footage for this game, more than any other Sonic game I've reviewed so far. Because I'm not just going to review one single playthrough, no, I wanted to make sure I got everything captured, and I gotta tell you, by the fourth playthrough, I was absolutely bored and tired of this game. I play video games to have a good time, either by myself or with a group of friends, but Shadow the Hedgehog offers nothing to me. Nothing. When it's not frustrating me with its absolutely horrible structure, it's putting me to sleep with its level design, forgettable music, lame-ass story, bleak graphics, and the fact that I have to play certain levels over and over again just to avoid the really shitty missions. When I play a game that not only do I think is terrible, but just outright boring, there's only so much I can talk about, guys. I drunk coffee, I ate a proper breakfast, I listened to all sorts of podcasts just to keep my mind active when playing this game. I bought this game with very low expectations. I mean, how could anyone think a Sonic game with a premise like this could possibly be good? Okay, sure, but what? But I know plenty of people who do enjoy it. Also, this is one big problem I hate about your reviews. You never seem to be able to look at anything from any other perspective from your own. Do you ever bother asking some people who might enjoy this game, or do you ever bother giving ideas of how it could be improved? No, you just give your opinion and a bunch of fluff, and it would be fine if it didn't go on for 20 fucking minutes. Shadow the Hedgehog doesn't even meet those low expectations. It's a void, where nothing happens and nothing matters. This is one game I'm never touching again. Until I have to play for the Let's Play channel anyway. Gotta get some more out of revenue some way, huh? Also, why bother? You don't like the game, you don't like playing it, and you've already said all you needed to say here. Why bother playing it again? Uh. Well, at least the video wasn't very long. I mean, there's only so much you can rant and bitch about without coming off as an immature fuckwad. Right, because 19 minutes is so short. And really, you could have trimmed this entire thing down to probably from 10 to 15 minutes. As a matter of fact, if you would like me to, I might take a try at it. To top it off, the information you gave was so bare bones. You never went into the how the game's level design worked, any possible glitches, which, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the least glitchy Sonic games ever made. Also, you never talked about who might like this aesthetic. All you gave was your opinion. And that really doesn't work for a 20-minute review.
Shadow the Hedgehog is just way too much of a boring, bleak, uninteresting game to really spend a long time harping on. Hell, I didn't even mention multiplayer, which is also completely uninteresting. This game really has nothing going for it. You've got to be kidding me. This game has plenty to offer. It has tons of stages, tons of different routes you can go on, tons of different weapons to play around with and mess with. It might not appeal to you, but it has plenty to offer for some other people. Well, there's only one game left to go. You guys all know what's coming up next. So I'll see you guys then. And that was the end of the review. And as always, this review was just disappointing and offered so little. Johnny, if you're watching this, don't take this the wrong way, but I don't think I'm ever going to enjoy your reviews. You go on way too long, you give so little to offer, and to top it off, I very rarely agree with you. But that would be fine if you could shorten your reviews a bit. Now for any fan who likes this review, please understand, I'm not saying he has to change his opinion or whatever. But the problem is he offers so little, he doesn't give any alternate perspectives, he gives nothing, he doesn't go into the background of this game's development, he gives so little, and he never, and it just doesn't seem like he's going to change. But with that being said, that's it for this series, I had a lot of fun doing this, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all. Good day.